Well, folks, with that whole economy problem in the nation's rearview mirror, it's time for our elected representatives to get busy doing what we pay them for, banning erectile dysfunction commercials from TV. <laughs> Don't let the fun and erectile dysfunction fool you. It's no laughing matter. Now, millions of men suffered severe depression in their later years when their crotch commander wouldn't salute. And there wasn't a damn thing you could do except cry and think about baseball. Finally, <laughs> in the waning, weeder-centric years of the Clinton administration came a little blue diamond-shaped life preserver that thrust ED out of our whispered back rooms and into our kitchens, laundry rooms, and dining room tables. <laughs> Viagra and its Louis Vuitton-like army of knockoffs are great products, but do they need to be advertising during uh, primetime children watching hours? I'll answer my own question for you, audience. No, no, they do not. Viagra, everyone in the whole world knows about your product. Boners in a bottle pretty much sell itself. <laughs> but that's not why you shouldn't be allowed to advertise on TV. You should be banned from TV because you are scaring the living shit out of our children. All right, first, kids need to have sexual information doled out slowly over time. The extreme basics, uh, boys have a penis, girls have a vagina, should last at least the first nine, ten years of a kid's life. <laughs> The rest is put together in bits and pieces over your adolescence through camp friends, dirty magazines, and Googling when your mom isn't looking. In my day, it was web crawling, but it's basically the same process. The information's super filth way. The point is, if you're six and suddenly presented with Bob Dole's entire sexual history, it's kind of an overload. All right, secondly, if you are terrifying kids with your misinformation, and you are, see a doctor if you have an erection lasting longer than four hours? Okay, sure, as an adult, but boys from 12 to 15 are pretty much one giant walking, talking chubby, and that's <laughs> perfectly normal. We don't need the running to the doctor every time the balloon won't deflate, all right? I had an erection in eighth grade that lasted four months, all right? An entire semester of civics sitting next to Sarah Belton will do that to you. There were fewer tents in that class uh, pitched than the Roman army. Anyway, I digress. Call me Sarah. The third reason these commercials are freaking our children out is that they need no reminders that their parents pop the weasel. All right, children should figure out that their parents are still having sex the way everyone else does. One drunken night in high school, your brain suddenly kicks into fifth gear and you realize that wrestling match you walked in on as a kid was awfully naked. <laughs> Kids, contrary to America's test scores, are not stupid. They know that the elderly couple in their separate bathtubs will soon be bumping grundles. The drug company says it's an issue of free speech, but there are limits on how free our speech is. I can't yell fire in a crowded movie theater, say bomb in an airport, or tattoo the American flag on my young son's forehead. It stands the reason that we ought to be able to protect our children from the veiled dick improvement innuendos of drug marketers addressing a medical need and continue the wholesome TV we are used to having our children watch. Full of needless buoys. That's pretty needless. It's actually on PBS. <laughs> Thank you, Nissan, and thank you, Bobby Smith. Thank you guys very much.